Hi everyone. Welcome to episode 9 of Adventure of a Lifetime, where Emily is now an official scuba diver after getting her C card in episode 8. So it also means that Emily can rent scuba gear from the shop and also comes to the ultimate test to be able to dive deep down into the second ship and get the treasure. So near the end of episode 8, Hiroki and Emily, they prepared to go scuba diving. They went together, but then Chisa told Hiroki to stop because she noticed that Emily was being overwhelmed by diving a lot of meters down. So now Emily is recovering on the surface, and hopefully it doesn't make her want to give up. So Emily also noticed that um, the scuba gear is quite heavy when she puts it on on the surface. And for Chisa, she's able to scuba dive or dive without any scuba gear. So, in a sense, Hiroki kind of envies Chisa. But anyways, going back to Emily, let's see what she's going to do next. So Emily's like, um, okay, I can't go any further. Back on the beach, Emily laid out on the beach in her equipment. Okay, second, so well, at least take off your equipment because um, you don't want that to get dirty because then it'll be really hard to um, clean and you can't use it again. So we come back after our little dive, but carrying all that gear from the shadows up the beach was no small task. It was hard for me, but for Emily, who n looked like she never lifted anything heavier than a pasta fork, it must have been a torture. Here, I'll help you. But Emily has to stand up first. Uh, she can't be on or like laying down on the beach. Because it'll be hard for Hiroki to take off the scuba gear. But she's happy that um, she has a helping hand. And once again, she's just jealous. Oh, so um, he went to go help her. Come on, it's the buddy system. I'm sure he, she's just like, a, well, the buddy system doesn't mean that you can do this. Fine, finding excuses, finding justification. So as I helped Emily out of her gear, I called over to Chisa. So um, what was up by the ghost, or what was up over by the ghost ship? So Chisa had gone alone, but told us not to come closer via the hand signal. Oh, so also um. She's noticed that the current was really bad, so it's not safe to go scuba diving. A current. So I think um, the ghost ship disrupted the current, and that's why it's all weird. So they go, well, um, you don't want to be swept away by the currents when you're going towards the ghost ship. And I think um, the ghost ship acts like a, um, it's one of those um, tail fins, those um, control surfaces, and it's directing water in all sorts, sorts of different ways. Seriously? So Emily asked, finally free of her cylinder and other equipment. So there are unstable currents in the ocean, just, just like air currents on land, and they can change direction with depth. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so there's, um, based on the, um, land mass or landform underneath the sea, um, they can basically direct water in many different ways, and that's what creates that, um, water stream. There you go. So it didn't look, look like Emily was getting it. She's probably thinking it would be easy to swim back since you were still in water. Well, um, she may be able to swim back, but I'm pretty sure she may be swept hundreds of meters offshore. So if a rip current heads toward land, you might be okay. But if you get caught in a rip current that heads to the open sea, guess what happens? Well, I'm pretty sure we know hap what happens. Suddenly went pale as she finally understood the, the danger. So, exactly. Right, Chisa? So what does Chisa have to say about this? Because we do know, th know that, that she's still jealous. So I wonder if they have more many um, instruments to detect rip currents. Because um, using paper maps isn't going to help. And well, I'm not really sure. Okay. She just said, somewhat rashly before going off to sit alone in the shade. Um, I think Hiroki knows but doesn't want to tell Emily. Okay, so we're back at the Machiko Cafe. We have a grandmother who is overly biased towards Emily. She's like, oh, um, you remind me of my old times. While she's extremely rude and hostile to her own grandson, Hiroki. So we were sitting in the Machiko Cafe before it opened, and Emily was writing feverishly about the day's dive in her new logbook. And apparently she's just not happy with what Emily was writing. She's like, well, you're over-exaggerating. That didn't happen, so write it properly. Okay, well, it's not for you, it's for my future um, posterity. The logbook was used to kept is used to keep track of your dives. And they're useful for keeping track of which sea, what depth, and how long you dived. And there's sections for other details such as weather conditions, who else was there, and even the space to write, just like a diary. So some people even make sketches of the fish they saw during their dive. Ooh, it's nice. And I'm pretty sure we've seen this kind of logbook in Poltop's other games. Notably, if I hire wings with the you know, flight diary. Well, um, Katori was using it to write her to do list. And a sky full of stars with the um, astronomer's journal. And um, we saw that way in the beginning when um, the three kids. Akito, Hikari, and Saya were recording or doing stargazing way in the early morning. Well, anyways, um, you can go watch that if you're interested. So not only they're fun to fill out, logbooks are also useful for trying 
or when trying t for more advanced certification or renting equipment. Okay, so um, it shows that you have experience, it shows that you are able to handle deeper depths, and they can, you can use that as evidence or proof to convince the um, the licensing people that um, you are capable of doing more than a C card. There you go. Physical proof. Which is why writing about one's perceived invincibility wasn't such a good idea. It's basically, basically it's like, um, well, don't exaggerate, because um, if you exaggerate, then you're going to fool all those people that you're capable of doing deeper dives, even though you really can't. But that's only if you show it to them. So she's like, glanced at my log. Oh, so Hiroki also has a log as well. Huh? Wait, what? So Emily saw my sketch of the ghost ship and sulked. So what does it remind her of? No, I was gonna draw that. I was gonna be first. So who's stopping you then? Well, the fact that you beat me to the punch, now I don't feel like I want to draw it. Okay, so either she does not want to be second, or she didn't think that she had the artistic skill. Well, that's true. And I think as well, um, Hiroki drew so well that, um, oh, so if I draw my version of the second ship, it's gonna look really, really bad. So with a pained look on her face, she went right back to writing. So afterwards, she said compared our logbooks. It's like, well, you need more practice, Emily. So we also have to come up with a more detailed dive plan. It's like, well, um, now that you mentioned rip currents, we're gonna have to try to find a way to dive around all these rip currents. Basically, have a good meteorological map about the currents underneath the sea. So, the lost engagement ring that Emily was looking for was in the ghost ship. We had to get inside somehow, but entering a second ship required quite a bit of skill. That's true. So, these wrecking lessons were offered, but only in advanced scuba classes. So basically, Emily needs more practice to be able to get the higher certification and be able to learn special skills that will allow her to go inside the ship. So, um, that also applies to Hiroki as well. So, natural buoyancy refers to the technique of floating in place in the water, which, and it's more difficult than it sounds. You have to control your body's buoyancy to keep from sinking or floating up. And the technique would be necessary for wrecking. I'm pretty sure that's a very expensive equipment. Okay, so this was when um, Emily wanted to commit suicide, and um, Hiroki had to save her. But I'm pretty sure um, they'll be able to find it. So Emily, even though Emily was working at the cafe, all her money went to renting diving equipment. Even the discounted piece price at Chisa's shop didn't do much to offset the cost of the daily rentals. Well, lucky for us, um, I got my hands on this. Oh, okay, so, um, sorry for the skip, but anyways, um, 
Hiroki has a camera that they can use. And I'm not really sure if it is um, underwater or dive certified. But it looks like it has heavy duty casing and um, adjusting knobs. It looks like um, the lenses are double protected. So it might mean that it is dive certified. But not sure how deep it can go. Okay, and it's an old camera that um, Hiroki's grandpa used to use. So it had turned up when I searched the shed. So obviously it's like, um, well it works, but um, it uses film. And in these days it's really hard to get film. And it was what put Kodak out of business for a little bit. Well Kodak is still, still alive, but um, they went into bankruptcy because they kept relying on film cameras to support the business. So it's like going, well if it's not digital, what's wrong with it then? So yeah, it needs film. So let me start at the camera. Well, I'm pretty sure um, that was true. And this is actually smaller than the um, first cameras that were invented. The ones that were so big, they can only take one picture. And you actually had to use magnesium to do the flash. Ah, those old cameras. Well, I'm not too sure, but apparently this one is especially big. I guess it has something to, to do with it being an underwater camera. So it has an extra casing to protect it from water damage. And I think um, the casing pr gives it like a little um, air pocket for the actual camera to be able to float or inside. So I put a small yellow box on the table. So here's the film I found with the camera. Uh, it's past the use by date, but I think it's still okay. Well, I don't know if they're going to be able to get pictures of it. Because if it's past the use by date, there's a, there's a chance that the film's already exposed and it can't catch or capture a picture. What's all this other stuff then? So she said I noticed another camera accessory. I'm not really sure, but I think you can still take pictures without it. Well, these days you can look up anything online. So I've already studied how to use the camera, what to watch out for when using film, and so on. So we, we can use this to take pictures of the exterior. So one of the problems is that, um, are they able to reach close enough to get good pictures? Because, um, if they're pretty far from the ship and take pictures, it's nothing more than just looking at it with your own eyes and you won't be able to catch the details or get more useful information that will help you scuba dive better. But anyways, Emily does enjoy like well, an old film camera. Very interesting. And I kind of wonder if the other equipment is like um different lenses, because um usually when you buy a camera in those days, it comes with like well actually even t today as well, it comes with multiple lenses. You have like a telephoto close zoom lens, and you have a wide angle. Like um, scenic kind of lens. But after all these years, does it still work then? Not a clue. Maybe we should try it out first. And I'm pretty sure it works on surface. You don't have to go underwater to test it. Okay, well, we'll just test it underwater tomorrow. Well, I'd, I'd love to say yes, but my finances are saying no. 
So apparently, um, Emily Shrom money, obviously. So, um, well, we can't go renting equipment again because, um, that's going to put a bigger financial drain on Emily, so. Well, there's still time, so, um, we can just wait till Emily makes back all the money that she's she owes to this classes and um, renting the equipment. Okay, so Ryota's here. Hey, I'm Ryota, welcome, so what's up? It was still a bit too early for him to be eating dinner, but... Hang this up for me. So we have to pull a flyer from the bundle in his hand. When I saw it, what was on it, I couldn't help blurting it out. Oh, so it's happening again this year. Oh, so a fireworks show. Just like um, what happened at the end of Volume 1 of Corona Blossom. So the flyer had a picture of fireworks on it. So the Agasawara Bond Festival was famous, but on the same that same day they also held a big fireworks show. So this was the summer festival. So I'm pretty sure the fireworks basically commemorates the end of the festival. And you can watch them from the Omora Beach. Hey, um, don't you think that you should contribute some work to me as well? Because um, I laid the canoe and um, I should expect something in return. And Emily seems like a... Well, I'm interested. I want to do it. So he flipped the flyer around to reveal what was on the back. So well, what is it? Oh, okay, so the flyer has Chisa's face on it, so come. Like, um, so she's basically like um, advertising or promotion material for everyone. Wait, it is! And you see Chisa smiling, and I wonder what she says. And I'm pretty sure she just feels embarrassed, like, well, I didn't want to be on the paper, but they made me be on there so that I can, they can make this festival more popular, more famous. There you go. So the fact that she's the dolphin girl, she is able to connect with Finn, the dolphin. People want to use that to advertise this festival. And while Ryota's being happy about it, she just takes away the flyers and goes, No, don't look at it. Hmm. So, is this a modeling debut, Chisa? Okay, so I think the mom had a play in this like, well, I'm so proud of my daughter, I want her name as the Dolphin Girl to be all over the island, so this is a good chance for me to promote my lovely daughter. So she used her body to hide the flyer on the table. It was weird for her to see her so upset. She must have been really embarrassed. Okay, so if she's just gonna be in it, how about you two? So Emily and Hiroki. Well, obviously Emily said, come. I'll do, I'll do, I'll help you. And same thing with Hiroki. 
Well, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna make Emily like be like this um advertising icon. So well, it's already done. So um, you don't have to worry about that. Well, you can do something else. Okay, so um, you get to pass it out, and I'm pretty sure it's not as bad as being modeling. It's just more footwork. Okay, so Emily, you get the better part. You just get to hand it out. Well, she to get some bears from. With their picture being shown all over the islands. Hey, hold up, um, Emily. Where are you going? Um, it's time to to um open. So she doesn't sound envious. She's not even a good way, and other people just like seeing her happy. So, in a sense, she's just still not comfortable with Emily. It's like, oh, well, it could have been an easy, enjoyable summer holiday, but Emily had to show up, and um, now we have to help with her business of things. And the grandma's kind of pushing for it as well. Well, still, it seems like you're having fun. <laughs> So Chisa uh, pursued her lips in discontent and looked at the freshly printed flyers. Well, um, at least it's on the back side. But if Emily or Ryota passes the flyers back side up, that's still kind of like it's on the front side, so... As I watched her, I contemplate on whether I should ask. It's like, well, um, why did they put you on the flyer and what happened? So it seemed like what she just said might be part of the reason why she didn't want to scuba dive anymore. Oh, okay, so we get an option to ask her. So we can ask Chisa why we didn't want to why she doesn't want to scuba dive or well um just be quiet because um that might make it worse that might rub salt in her wound so i'm actually gonna try the first option so ask her about it and i'm pretty sure this is gonna lead to the chisa route at the end hey i'm chisa so um what is it so next time, um, why not come diving with us then? No, I have been diving with you. It's just that um, I'm not in diving equipment. So uh, well, um, we can be buddies like old times. Like we we can actually wear scuba equipment and check each other and such. So she still looked hesitant. But then again, I'll be replacing Emily, and given that Emily is still a novice or beginner at scuba dive, it's better that um, you take care of her over me. But they can have, have like a three system, where um, Chisa checks Emily, Emily checks Hiroki, Hiroki checks Chisa, and the other way around. That's true. But I want to go diving with you again. Maybe one day. She was dodging me and there wasn't much else I could do. So due to current circumstances, I need to dive with Emily. And that was fun and all, but I had come to a Gosquar to go back to the special place with Chisa. So basically, Hiroki did have plans to um, go hang out with Chisa for the summer holidays. And that's probably what Chisa was prepared for. Then Emily showed up and everything just changed. 
And it's like, well, um, as much as, um, I kind of feel jealous that you're with Emily, but then again, she's a novice and, um, we don't want her to get hurt over here. When I tried to bring it up completely, or but when I tried to bring it up, she ignored me completely. Maybe she was embarrassed, or maybe I was missing something. Nani. What is it? Nothing? So she just shook her head and muttered weirdo under her breath. Well, anyways, um, it's time for the shop to open, so... Let's forget about that for now. So she just stood up and put on her apron. So the cafe will be opening up in 15 minutes. Okay, so I'll put the flyer over here. Um, I wonder where she's just gonna hang up the flyer. Um, sure, go ahead. And, well, I don't like it that I be labeled with this title. And even though people say it's a good thing, like, well, you connect with the dolphin, it's still kind of embarrassing for Chisa. Okay, so I'll put right side up so that nobody can see me on the other side. She's a mutter as she hung the flyer up on the shop bulletin board. Even though Chisa complained, she never refused the favor, and that's why people rely on her so much. Well, anyways, I can't wait for the summer festival. So we stood there talking, looking over the flyer as we talked about the old days. And it made us even more excited for the future. So I woke up early for a light walk on the beach. Hmm, so it looks like it's going to be another hot day as well. So the clear weather was great, but this kind of heat really made you miss the rain. It's like, well, it's really hot, so um, maybe it was better if it was raining. Hmm, so I noticed Chinami on the beach as well. So Chinami was on the beach as well, but she seemed to be distracted by something. Oh, morning, Chinami. I never thought I'd see you outside. So like, well, for some reason, I had to come out to the beach. And what's that reason? So look to see what she was staring at. Uh oh. Okay, so it's the guy. Um, he entered the cafe before it was open, and Shinami thinks like, well, he may be um a suspect. Wait, that guy. There you go. So the guy um who came into the shop before it opened for breakfast. And he's standing at the deserted beach. He's standing on the edge of the d deserted beach. Oh, um, good morning. Oh, you Oh, so you're out for a walk then? Well, he might seem lost, or he might be up to something else. So the man looked out at the water. Well, I'm just here to um, relax and working so hard back on mainland, so... I see. So he should, he should just do whatever makes him happy, but I guess that's easy for 
a teen like me to say, adults probably thought, think differently. Uh, not really, I just help out because I'm staying here for free. Free? So Machiko Cafe is my grandma's cafe. She's gonna close up the summer, so I came to help for summer break. Uh, yeah, that's true. So, what about those other two? Oh, um, she's a local. She's the energetic one with a tan. And then, then there's Emily. She comes from the main island like me to have fun on a summer break. She's pretty... She's the pretty blonde one. And of course, I couldn't tell him that she ran away from home. Well, that's good to hide from strangers like him. And this reminds me of the old times um, when I had an adventure. I don't think it's a lecture. I think it's more like um, he just really misses the old times and likes to talk about it. Because it happens a lot with um, many of the older people. Okay. So how about coming by for breakfast? Once again, I'm sorry that I came into the shop before it opened, so please listen my apology. Well, we're open for dinner, so um, please do come again. We're a simple cafe, and we serve good food. Okay, so I'll come back soon. So the man waved and plodded off. Hey, Chinami, are you seriously planning to stalk him? It's like, well, you're suspicious of him and you want to track his every move to confirm your theory. Yes. Okay, I'm going to keep an eye on him because I think he's up to no good. Hey, stop it. You're just going to make him angry. Well, I don't care. He might be a suspect. Well, I'm bored. I just want something exciting to happen that's out of the ordinary. Well, maybe Chinami should consider coming to the mainland and see what's over there versus here. Maybe that will give her some excitement. It's like, oh, well, there's other ways to have fun. There you go. Well, Chinami could be really a handful sometimes. What's going on? So it looks like they're setting up all those stands for the festival, and Emily is participating in the setup. Hey, I mean, you no, know, we really shouldn't laugh. Uh, ha 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 ha. Okay, so he broke his um statement. So that afternoon, Emily and I sat on the bench in the. Ogamiyama Park watching a video on our own smartphones. So what's the video about? And now uh, Chisa comes to join us. Hey, what are you two doing? Um, I see that you two are, are having fun. Hmm. So she's, she's took a peek at the screen. Okay, I think it's an advertisement Featuring Chisa and Finn. Okay, yeah, so, um, apparently, um, she's being interviewed by some TV announcer. 
And I wonder if um she's in a costume that her mother picked for her. Okay, so apparently, um, well, they make it obvious that she's uh, quite embarrassed when she's giving her um, introduction and biography of Finn on the waves. And she's stuttering, she's hesitating, she's like, um, uh, well, 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 um, 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 well, uh, you see, uh... So obviously she would be upset, like, um, what are you watching? Um, Oh, that was the TV show that you're on. We found it on a video site. <laughs> and? And... I'm pretty sure the way that Chisa acts on screen is like, uh, well, um, you're all nervous, you're all tense. That kind of makes it look cute for the viewers. I uh, see, um, look, Finn, um, can, um, be a, a very, very uh, rowdy, uh, you see, uh, 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 uh. And while she's just giving her little biography, Finn decides to join the fun by splashing water all over the, um, I'll say like the TV crew. And that's when she just grabbed the phone and said, come, alright, don't watch anymore. No, no, no. Yeah, don't watch anymore. But that was kind of cute. I kind of liked the way you were acting on the set. Shut up. Hey, look. All those comments say cute as well. I'll uh, read him. Wait, does that brighten up Chisa? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, look like they're talking about Finn. Well, the way that Finn acts, that's kind of cute. It's kind of unnatural. Hey, what was that about? Ha 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 ha! I'm just kidding. Um, they call you cute as well. Uh, uh. So I think of she's she might be strangling him. I guess if I can't watch it because you're here, then I'll just bookmark and watch it later at night. Oh, come on. So what are you weak against? Well, secret, I'm not gonna tell you. Oh, boo hoo hoo! A party pooper. Oh really? So I think she's like a well. She's trying to make them feel bad. Like, oh, well, I was going to do some more good, but now that this happened and I lost my motivation. So, well, what? There he goes. Like, oh, I lost my motivation thanks to that video, so forget about it. So, she just took some ice cream out of her grocery bag and started eating. She turned the other way and was silently. Or sending in an effort to show she was ignoring us. Well, let's go take you to the ice cream shop and you go do it yourself. So she just sulkily handed over the rest of the ice cream. 
Oh yeah, so what do you mean somewhere nice? Um don't think I forgot already. Oh uh, well well well. The tuna hole. What's that? Oh, I've heard of that. It's one of the best diving spots in Ogasawara. Oh, okay. So it's also a place to try out um, the cameras. Like, well, you can go here without the need to wear scuba gear, so... Maybe that's a good place. And maybe a place for Emily to practice more scuba diving as well. So Emily owned her mask and snorkel, but she always had to rent the other diving equipment. So renting was sort of a pain since it was sometimes difficult to find the perfect fit. And since masks and snorkels weren't that expensive anyways, most people ended up buying their own. And of course, I had mine as well. And she's was a big help as she was able to handle the outrigger canoe and could act as her own guide. Well, I'm tired. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, please forgive me. Please. So Emily wasted no time in putting on her puppy dog eyes for Chisa. Please! Now it's hard to deny her um, request. So with that, Chisa was defeated by Emily's cute bomb and we finally set out for the Tino Hole. So the Iruga canoe sailed across for the peaceful sea. Alright, so I'll stop here for episode 9. So it's kind of interesting that um, Chisa brought up all of this talk about, um, well, we've got to be careful, you got to plan our scoot out carefully because um, there's so many things that um, they don't teach you in class but to be aware of because it may cause danger for you. And as they go, well, the rip currents, they can blow you in all sorts of different directions and we have to take care of that account for that when we go down to that second ship so um we're gonna see how they're going to continue their journey to the second ship and before i close this episode i'm gonna go ahead and see what happens with the other route so um the part where chisa was talking about well um i may have been a skewer diver in the past but I've somewhat given up on it. So let's see what's gonna happen with the other option. Okay, so I'm back at the selection page, and let's see what happens if I pick the second option. So don't say anything, don't talk to Chisa about her interest or um, her motivation in scuba diving. So, I'm pretty sure this leads to the Emily route. Or the only route option. So, anyways, Hiroki's like, well, never mind. Well, Chisa doesn't seem to be interested in talking about it. And it's better to let it slide for now. Okay, then, so it's time to open shop. So, Chisa stood up and put on her apron. Okay, so I think this is where the first option also leads to. So overall, in this episode, it's quite interesting that, um, well, Chisa wanted to be scuba diving with Hiroki, but the fact that Emily's here, she's a novice and needs support and help, so Chisa can't help but let Hiroki take care of Emily for now. And hopefully, that'll give Emily enough experience to be able to go deep down to the second ship without any trouble. 
And I'm pretty sure they'll have to do more research about the rip currents. Because there may be some kind of pattern that they could use to have an estimate about how the currents are going to flow. And also, with regards to the little video at the end of the episode, even if Chisa doesn't want Emily or Hiroki to see it, they're able to find it elsewhere on their own because it's probably viral, lots of viewers, lots of watchers, lots of people who share the video. And you can tell by all those comments, oh look, she's just acting cute on TV. But putting that all aside, let's see how it's going to be at the tuna hole that she's talked about at the end of the episode. So with that in mind, I'll see you later.